Hello everyone, welcome back to Prosto Hub and we are discussing the final session of our topic in plant failures and management. So in our previous two sessions we have discussed the introduction, definition, Alberts and criteria for implant success, the various classification of implant failures, the different signs and symptoms, and what is ailing, failing, and failed implant, the different factors contributing to implant failure, perioperative errors contributing to implant failure, and the different parameters that are used to evaluate a failing or a failed implant, and in detail about peri-implantitis. So in this session, we will be completing the topic by discussing the maintenance of implant, management of various implant complications, and conclusion and references. So before getting into detail, I request everyone to please do like, share, and subscribe my channel. And who are new to this channel, my name is Dr. Jolsna, and this is my channel, Prosto Hub. And through this channel, I discuss some of the important topics in the subject of prosthodontics, which helps the BDS as well as MDS students, especially for their university exam preparation. So if you have any queries or any uh, suggestions or any topics uh, that needs to be discussed, you can comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail ID. So let's get into the topic. Before getting into our today's session, from our previous session, one of our subscribers, that is uh, Dr. Kirtika Krishnan, has asked to explain the SAC classification of implants. So let's see what it is. So the ITI, that is the International Team for Implantology, has formalized a system of classification for dental implant procedures in order to help the clinicians at every level of expertise and exper experience. So this provides an evidence-based objective framework for the assessment of the potential difficulty or complexity and risk of implant-related treatment for a given clinical situation. And it serves as a guide for the clinicians in both patient selection and treatment. So basically, the SAC stands for straightforward, advanced, and complex. So here, this uh, classification system categorizes the treatment procedures into three classes, that is straightforward, advanced, and complex, depending upon the level of difficulty. So this is basics about the SAC classification. So as I said before, the SAC classification objectively classify a patient's rehabilitation with dental implants as three groups. That is a straightforward, advanced or complex from both surgical as well as a prosthetic perspective. So in the 2009 version of the SAC classification, the main determinants were three things. Um, that is the aesthetic risk, the complexity of the process and the risk of complication. And later, this was modified and several other risk factors were also added. They are general risk, aesthetic risk, edentulous aesthetic risk, surgical risk, and prosthetic risk. Based on these risk factors, the classification was modified and the updated SAC assessment tool allows the users to derive an SAC classification according to their specific case based on these risk factors. So, for example, this is the application of surgical SAC classification in a clinical scenario that is single tooth space with sufficient bone. So, under these two uh, conditions can be there. It can be in the non-aesthetic zone or it can be in the aesthetic zone. So, five clinical parameters are selected in this. That is the bone volume, anatomic risk, aesthetic risk, complexity of the treatment process and risk of complications and consequences. So, based on these clinical parameters, we categorize the treatment as straightforward, advanced or complex. So, the non-aesthetic zone comes under a straightforward treatment, whereas aesthetic zone comes under advanced SAC classification. So, like this, there are different clinical scenarios like uh, short edangulus, extended edangulus, full arch mandible, etc. So, in each of these clinical scenario, we select these uh, clinical parameters and categorize the treatment into three groups that is either straightforward, advanced or complex. Now here is another clinical scenario that is single tooth space with deficient vertical bone volume where you apply the surgical SAC classification. So the consistent five clinical parameters and uh, based on these parameters, Two conditions are there, non-aesthetic zone and aesthetic zone. And both these cases come under 
complex treatment procedure. Now that was surgical HIC classification. Next, the application of restorative HIC classification for different clinical scenarios like posterior single tooth or anterior single tooth restoration, an edentulous mandible restored with removable or fixed prosthesis, and also an edentulous maxilla restored with a removable or a fixed prosthesis. So here, the clinical parameters depends upon the intraoral location and size. So for example, here the clinical scenario is edentulous maxilla restored with removable prosthesis. So the different clinical parameters are the interarch distance, the loading protocols, aesthetic risk, interim restoration during healing, occlusal parafunction, and the occlusal scheme of the opposing arch. So based on these parameters, we categorize the treatment plan into straightforward, advanced or complex. So there, as I have said earlier, there are different clinical scenarios and uh, I have just taken one among them. Uh, uh, so if you want to know in detail, you can visit this site, the SAC assessment tool, jockstat.net or else you can uh, refer the textbook, the SAC classification in implant industry authored by Dawson Shen et al. So let us come back to our topic that is the implant maintenance. So the maintenance of implant is really important because good health of the peri-implant tissue is essential for the survival of the implant and the implant maintenance comprises of two steps that is the patient self-care and also clinical maintenance procedures. Patient self-care includes maintaining the plaque control and the use of interdental brushes or hand brushes and motorized brushes, use of dental floss and chlorhexidine mouthwash. So the patient compliance is a major factor in implant maintenance and it depends upon the relative simplicity of the procedure, minimum number of devices that are used and also the time required for maintenance and care. Let us see a hygienist role which includes checking the plug control effectiveness, check for inflammatory changes, if pathology is found, probe with a plastic probe and supragingival scaling and also check for any problems of the implant. The dentist clinical role includes checking the patient every three to four months and also check the plug control effectiveness, radiographic evaluation every year, checking for any inflammatory changes, if pathology found, probe with plastic probe and also check for any issues of the implant. So follow up is a must for dental implant therapy. So under the instrumentation for implant hygiene maintenance, ultrasonic scalers and steel scalers are not indicated whereas instruments coated with plastic, graphite, nylon or teflon are indicated and also titanium curettes are used. The chemotherapeutic agents used for hygiene maintenance which consist of chlorhexidine gluconate 0.12% neutral sodium fluoride and local drug delivery system like minocycline chlorhexidine gluconate and we have already discussed about the tetracycline strip in our previous session which is called as actocyte and arrestin that includes the minocycline in the local drug delivery system. So these are the chemotherapeutic agents used to maintain the hygiene of the implant. These are the different aids used to maintain the oral hygiene that is the nylon brushes, the interdental brushes, dental floss, the oral irrigators like the water pick system and the antiseptic and antibacterial mouthwashes. Coming to the clinical maintenance procedures that includes examination of implant site and also the various maintenance protocols. So under examination of implant site comes the crown and soft tissue assessment where you assess the uh, probing depth, bleeding on probing, and also occlusal evaluation, the pink aesthetic, white aesthetic scores, etc. And a radiographic examination also has to be done uh, every year, and uh, it is an important tool to detect the osseo integration of the implant. So, early signs of failure include a thin radiolucent line present surrounding the implant. So, this is also an important assessment tool. Then comes the mobility assessment which can be done by different tests called percussion test, cutting torque test, uh, perio test, etc. So this is about the examination of implant site. Coming to the clinical maintenance protocols. So there are numerous evaluation protocols for postoperative maintenance in implant dentistry 
and here i'll be discussing two standard protocols one is implant quality scale and another is the akut protocol so the international congress of oral implantologists formulated the implant quality scale in 2007 which determined the success rate of implant based on the clinical conditions and also management of the same so according to this uh, quality scale implants were uh, categorized into four groups so first one is success that is implants of optimum health so there are certain clinical condition that is no pain or tenderness upon function zero mobility less than 2 mm radiographic bone loss and probing depth is less than 5 mm and no exudate history so this uh, management is normal maintenance the second groups that is survival that is implants with satisfactory health so here again there is no pain or mobility 2 to 4 mm of radiographic bone loss probing depth 5 to 7 mm and no exudate and this can be managed by reduction of stresses and also uh, more follow up gingivoplasty and yearly radiographs again the third group that is survival that is implants with compromised health so here there is radiographic bone loss greater than 4 mm probing depth greater than 7 mm and may have exudate history and this can be managed by again reduction of stresses local drug therapy surgical reentry and revision and a change in processes or implants and the final group that is failure that is clinical or absolute failure so here any of the clinical condition can happen there is pain there is mobility radiographic bone loss greater than half the length of the implant and uncontrolled exudate and the management is removal of implant so this is implant quality scale this is the akut protocol proposed by lang et al so here <coughs> this protocol recommends the clinical procedures for implants at different stages of survival so here also four groups are there four stages are there of uh, different clinical condition and the recommended therapy for each condition so stage a consists of uh, probing depth less than 3 mm plaque or bleeding on probing is present so the therapy is oral prophylaxis the stage b that is a uh, probing depth is 4 to 5 mm with no radiographic bone loss again the oral prophylaxis oral hygiene instruction and also local anti infective therapy that includes chlorhexidine mouthwash the stage c consists of uh, the pd greater than 5 mm and radiological bone loss less than 2 mm so here again oral prophylaxis plus microbiological test and local as well as systemic anti infective therapy and finally the stage d where the probing depth is greater than 5 mm radiographic bone loss greater than 2 mm and here it includes the treatment includes resective or regenerative surgery and this we have already discussed in our previous session of peri implantitis next coming to surgical complications and management so here is a table that explains the different surgical complications that can happen during the surgery which includes nerve injury hemorrhage during osteotomy fracture of the bone the penetration of nasal or sinus floor lack of primary stability significant bleeding devitalization of adjacent teeth and failure in osseo integration so the various possible causes of these failures and also the different solutions for each of these case is given in this table below coming to prosthetic and other complication which includes loosening of one or more prosthetic screws development of pain after placement of implant fracture of a prosthetic screw or an abutment screw veneer debonding fracture of framework or implant fracture continuing bone loss around one or more implant visibility of titanium abutment through the mucosa and bleeding on probing so these are the different uh, implant complication prosthetic uh, or other complication and the various possible causes as well as solution is given in the chart below Thus, we come to the end of our current session, and finally, the conclusion. Despite the high success rate and stability of dental implants, failures do occur, and early detection and treatment of early progressive bone loss should be done by mechanical debridement, antimicrobial therapy, regenerative therapy, etc. And regular review and maintenance of patients are a must, and it is very essential to maintain health of implant supporting tissues. 
and it this will also prevent minor complication and en enhance one's long term success at providing the treatment these are my references for the topic implant failure and its management so thank you all for watching my video please do like share and subscribe my channel if you are finding these videos useful and as i have said before if you have any queries any topic suggestions or feedbacks do comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id so it's bye from prosthohub until our next session with a new topic